Following that, we have Dr. Kevin Stillwagon, who discusses the intricacies of the immune system and how it responds to viral infections, especially focusing on COVID. He explains the role of the epithelial barrier in protecting the body from external pathogens and how viruses like COVID or supposed viruses must attach to the specific receptors on this barrier to initiate an immune response. Dr. Stillwagon emphasizes the importance of understanding the cellular immune response and highlights that protection against infection relies on specialized immune cells. With the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it has something on its, on its shell on that virus called the spike protein. And the spike protein is what will attach to the receptors that are actually on that epithelial barrier, you see. So it's, an, it's a two-way communication that's happening here. When the virus particle is inhaled, it just doesn't automatically go through that barrier. It has to attach to a receptor. When it attaches to the receptor, alarm bells go off in your immune system immediate, immediately. And that uses what's called cytokine signaling and interferon productions or interleukins, sometimes they're called, to alert the immune system that something has attached to the barrier, okay? There's something on there that's foreign. So your immune system is immediately alerted. Now, what happens then? Well, you've got these specialized cells that guard that barrier. They're like guard dogs all along that epithelial fence, I call it. And they're constantly looking and searching to see if there's uh, an invasion that's going to take place. So one of the cells that I want to talk about is called a dendritic cell, and it's highly specialized and it has the ability to actually reach through gaps in the fence. And yes, there are tiny gaps in the fence. And it can reach through those gaps and grab the particle that's still on the outside, still on the outside of you. And it will pull it in and it will chop it up into all of the protein parts that make it up. So for the SARS-CoV-2 virus, there were about 29 individual proteins, you see, and one of them is the spike protein. So it chops that virus particle up into all of these different protein parts, and it displays these proteins then on its surface to other immune cells that are along that barrier. And these are called T helper cells. And the T helper cells, their job is to look for something that truly is foreign, something that they've never seen before. And if they see that, and these things do have memory, if they see something that they've never seen before, then they will train the rest of the, the, rest of the immune system, other cells in your immune system that, hey, we got something here that's unique and we got we to gotta start building a defense against this thing. But also, and this is really the most important part about the natural immunity that a lot of people, including doctors, don't understand. Those dendritic cells will also show those parts, all those 29 different proteins, they will show those parts to another specialized cell that's called a T uh, cytotoxic T cell or a CD8 T cell. Now, these cells also have memory and they have been trained to look for something that has gotten through that barrier in the past. And even if it's similar, they will recognize it. Okay. And they then have the ability to destroy the cells that make up that epithelial barrier that have those proteins in them. And when they see those cells, they send what's called an apoptotic signal. That's a signal for that cell to kill itself. And it does so in a non-inflammatory way, you see. So that cell is taken out with the virus parts in it. It's destroyed and it's engulfed by other uh, immune cells that you have in your body called macrophages. And they absolutely get rid of it before the infection takes place, you see. So even though the virus may have gotten 
inside the cell that makes up the barrier, the virus never got inside of you. It never got past the barrier and into your bloodstream and into your lymph, you see. So that's when you're infected. Now, there are other cells that guard that fence too. And these are very amazing cells and they work really, really well in children. And one of them is called a natural killer cell. And the natural killer cell is nonspecific. It doesn't care what the virus is at all. All it's looking for is uh, whether or not a virus is inside of a cell. And if it detects that, then it will do the same thing that that specialized cytotoxic T cell did, you see. So the cytotoxic T cell is specialized. It's, it's looking for something specific. And when it finds it, it will take that cell out. But the natural killer cell doesn't do that. It's only looking for the presence of the virus. And when it detects that, it, it sends that apoptotic signal again to uh, the cell that contains the virus. And that cell is taken out and it's replaced with a new one. And that is where your protection of infection resides, right there. So that's what stops an infection from happening. Now, you've heard about herd immunity, I'm sure. The only way that we can ever reach herd immunity with any communicable disease is for enough of the population to be able to be not infected, you see. A certain number of the people have to have the ability to not be infected. So that protection is cellular, you see. It does not reside in those antibodies that are circulating on the inside of you waiting for the infection to happen. Now, there is one minor exception of an antibody that does provide protection of infection, and that is a very specialized antibody called a mucosal secretory IgA antibody. So here's how that works. When you do get a natural infection, okay, and the virus has actually gotten inside of you, there are B cells along that barrier as well. B cells are the ones that make the antibodies. So when these B cells see something come through that barrier in a natural way, through a natural infection, they will create what's called a secretory mucosal IgA antibody. And that antibody has the ability to be taken in by those cells that make up the fence, that make up the barrier. Those IgA antibodies are taken in on what's called the basal side. That's on the, the, the inside of the fence. So they go inside the cell on the basal side, on the inside of you, they are transmitted across the cell and secreted on the other side back into the mucus, okay? Now, those secretory mucosal IgA antibodies will be there to protect you from a future infection. So if you come in contact with uh, this particular antigen or virus or toxin, or bacteria, or whatever it is that you breathe in or you eat and it's sitting on that mucosal barrier, those IgA antibodies will be there to protect you from infection. So the message that I'm trying to get out is that you only get these specialized secretory mucosal IgA antibodies from a natural infection. You do not get these from injecting something into your body past that protective barrier. It's impossible. It just does not happen. You will get IgA antibodies for sure, but they're serum IgA antibodies. They're inside of you, you see. They can't stop the infection from happening. So, 
I've been writing about this for over two years now. And I've been saying that the pharmaceutical industry knows where the protection of infection is. They know that it is cellular. And they know that it does involve one special type of antibody, that secretory IgA antibody that's secreted into your mucosa. And they are going to try to figure out a way to get that protective mucosal antibody produced. While at Yale University, and this was just published uh, a, few, a few days ago uh, at, the, at the end of August, they are working with what's called a nebulized vaccine where they are taking the lipid nanoparticle, which is the vector, to deliver the message to make a protein. They're nebulizing that so that you can put it into an inhaler and breathe it into your nasal mucosa. And they're thinking that by doing this, because that particle will be taken in by the body and come through that mucosal membrane, that barrier, like we talked about, that it's going to be like a natural infection. And it will create that secretory mucosal IgA antibody. But I'm telling you now that it will not work. And they are going to waste billions of dollars doing this. Why is it not going to work? Well, because they're using a lipid nanoparticle as a vector to get the message to make the spike protein through that mucosal barrier. Why are they using a lipid nanoparticle? Because lipid nanoparticles are made of normal body fats, you see. They're made of cholesterol and another one called DSPC. These are normal body fats. So when you inhale these things, they will have the ability to naturally attach to that mucosal lining. They do not have to use a receptor because they're made of lipids, you see, the same stuff that your cellular membranes are made of. So when that happens, then... The cargo that's in that lipid nanoparticle, which is the messenger RNA, it's the message to make the antigen or make the protein. That message gets inside of the cell. And when it does, then the cell has the ability to start making the spike protein. And then the spike protein is secreted to the inside of you. But this is not going to create an IgA antibody, because it's not like a natural infection. You see, the natural infection needs to use a receptor on that barrier. And there's a lot of signaling going on, a lot of uh, cytokines and interleukins, as I talked about, and these are what's going to uh, stimulate the body to create that very specialized secretory IgA antibody that will protect you from infection. But let's say it somehow does create an IgA antibody that will be secreted out into the mucosa. It's still not going to work. Why is that? Because the protein that it makes is only a small part of the virus. It's the spike protein part. Just one part. And that part is everyone knows now, continuously gets mutated. It's always mutating. It's changing. And so when you're secreting a highly specialized AG, IgA antibody that's looking for a spike protein that mutates, it's not going to work. It won't attach to the new mutation, you see. So it will fail. This idea that they have will totally fail. So I hope that gives people a basic understanding of where the protection of infection resides, you see. It is cellular. It does not involve those serum antibodies that are constantly circulating inside of your body. So, you know, these people like Anthony Fauci that are 
just absolute misinformation spreaders. They will tell you that you have to continuously boost those antibodies to give you some protection so that when you do get infected, your experience with the disease symptoms will be less. Well, that doesn't work either. It just does not work. And the reason is because when you have natural antibodies that have been created from a natural infection, they are responsive to all parts of the particle, all of it, not just one tiny piece of it. So again, the antibody that's created on the inside of you from these shots is the wrong kind of antibody. It will attach to the virus particle for sure. It will do that, but it loosely attaches now. You see, it doesn't strongly bind to the virus particle. Why doesn't it strongly bind? Because, again, there has been a mutation to the protein that it's looking for. And so, I'll try to keep this as simple as possible, but antibodies are shaped like the letter Y. And it's the Y part of the antibody that will attach to the particle, okay, the spike protein or the virus. That's the part that attaches. Well, there's an exposed tail of the Y. And so depending upon how it attaches to that antigen or virus, that will change the shape of the tail of the Y. That is a signal to the immune system as to what they should do with the thing that's attached to the Y part, you see, the other end. And so if that tail changes shape in a certain way, your immune cells now will take that antigen-antibody complex inside of itself. Now, I know I'm, I'm using some big words here, but the antigen-antibody complex is simply the, uh, the antibody attached to the virus. So they'll take it in, but instead of doing what those immune cells normally do in a, in a situation like this, which would be to completely destroy and take apart that virus particle so that it can be eliminated. Instead of doing that, because of the way the tail of the Y is shaped now, because of the way it's attached to the antigen, it's not tightly, strongly attached, it's loosely attached. This allows that virus particle now to replicate inside of that immune cell. It replicates. It makes more copies of itself. And that is released inside of you, you see. So that's called antibody-dependent enhancement of infection, you see. It actually makes it easier for the virus, which has now been mutated. It's different than what that uh, very specialized antibody created from the shot was looking for. So it enhances the ability of that a particle to infect other cells in your body. But it's worse than that because it can actually enhance the disease process itself. And instead of making the disease symptoms less, it makes them worse. How does that happen? Well, because it can kick off what's called the, uh, the complement system. The complement system is a very, very uh, specialized part of your immune system, and it's the heavy artillery. It's reserved for what are called chronic infections or very localized infections that your body is having a really hard time getting rid of. So here's how that works. When those antibodies attach to the antigen, okay, or the virus, or the particle, or the toxin, or the bacteria, or whatever it is, when they attach, if you have 
enough of these antibodies floating around in you, which is exactly what Fauci is trying to convince you to do. Make more. Make more antibodies. The more you have, the better. No, that is not how this works. Because what can happen then is that you get two antibodies that will bind to the particle, to the spike protein, to the virus, to the bacteria, to the toxin, whatever it is. They bind in close proximity to each other, very closely. And again, this will change the shape of the tail of the Y. That's the other end that's just kind of hanging out there. It changes the shape of those tails so that it changes the shape of one of those complement proteins. Your complement system is 15 quintillion proteins of 30 different varieties that are constantly circulating in your bloodstream. They're always there, but they're just waiting for what's called the complement cascade to happen. That's when one of these proteins changes shape because of the shape of the tails of the Y that are attached to that antigen, it kicks off that cascade. Now other proteins start changing shape. The cascade moves along until the last proteins change shape. And these are the ones that will attach to the cells in your body that have that uh, the spike protein attached to it. And they will drill holes in the cell membrane. This is called the membrane attack complex and those cells will die the problem is it's highly inflammatory it causes a lot of swelling it brings in more cytokines it brings in more chemokines it brings in more white blood cells and this is highly destructive and it can affect normal tissues nearby normal cells that's how aggressive and hyperinflammatory this is. We have clear evidence of this now. It's very clear. Everybody knows that the incidence of myocarditis, even in children, even in young, healthy pilots, even in healthy athletes on the soccer field, on the football field, on the basketball field, we know that the evidence and the incidence of myocarditis is increasing after people get a second shot or get a booster shot. Why is that happening? Because it's kicking off what's called that complement cascade that I just talked about. So I'll explain it again in another way that might be a little simpler for people to understand. When you get the first shot, Okay, it's lipid nanoparticles. It's a message to make the protein, the spike protein. So these lipid nanoparticles, when they're injected into your bloodstream or into your lymph or into the muscle, they start circulating everywhere. They, they don't just sit at the injection, the, the, the injection site. Your body doesn't work like that. Okay, everything is connected. There are highways all through your body, uh, the blood vessels, the lymphatic system, the nervous system. All of these highways are ways that these particles can spread to other parts of your body. And that's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. But the danger is, as I mentioned before, the lipid nanoparticles are made of normal body fats. And they were designed that way. Why? Because they want it to go to all cells of the body. They want all cells of your body to start cranking out the spike protein. Why? Because they want the maximum immune response that they can possibly get. Because they think that having these antibodies circulating around in your bloodstream is going to protect you. And it won't. It's only there to react to the infection, as we've already covered. So, you get injected with the lipid nanoparticles. All of these uh, particles that contain that messenger RNA, the message to make the protein, they go to all cells of your body. All cells. Any cell will, will uptake that. That message to make the protein goes inside of the cell, and the ribosomes will take it up and start cranking out 
the spike proteins. Now, what's the danger in that? Well, with a natural infection, that doesn't happen. What did I say about a natural infection? It requires receptors. It will only go into cells that have those receptors, you see. But these lipid nanoparticles aren't like that. They go anywhere and everywhere. They even cross the blood-brain barrier, which is extremely dangerous. We know that they go into the testes and the ovaries. They get taken up by all kinds of tissue cells that should never have this going on. So those cells are going to start making these spike proteins. All right, so the spike protein is now floating in your bloodstream. Now what happens? Well, your immune system has to react to that. How does it do that? Well, I already mentioned that you have uh, specialized uh, cells called uh, helper T cells that are constantly looking for new stuff. They'd be floating around new proteins that they've never seen before. <laughs> what people don't understand about those T-cells is they, they can't just detect the protein floating around in your blood and lymph. They, they can't. It has to be shown to them in a very special way through specialized receptors. These are called MHC sites or major histo histocompatibility complexes. They can't just see what got injected into you. They cannot see it. It has to be shown to them by cells that take in the stuff that was injected into you, chopped up into all of its little pieces and all of its little parts, and then those have to be shown to the T helper cells. So they never get to see the, ins the entire spike protein. You see, they never, they never get to see the whole thing. Again, your cells start cranking out the spike protein, okay? The spike protein is floating around in your blood. The T cells can't see that. They have to wait for specialized cells called antigen-presenting cells to grab, grab that spike protein, chop it up into smaller pieces called peptides. That is what's shown to the T cells. So again, they never get to see the whole picture. But guess what does get to see the whole picture? The B cell. The thing that actually makes the antibody. The B cell can see and detect and take in the entire spike protein, most definitely. And when it does, it starts making antibodies. But they're suboptimal antibodies, you see. These can be antibodies that can react to normal proteins in your body. Normal proteins. And when that happens, that's called an, an autoimmune response, which is extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. So why is this happening? It's happening because Fauci wants you to make as many of these spike proteins as you possibly can. This is ridiculous because your B cells are going to auto-react to that. They are going to take up that spike protein and they are going to immediately start making suboptimal antibodies. This is extremely dangerous. A natural infection doesn't work that way. A natural infection is slower and it gives the body time for those T cells to be educated. And it's the T cells, the T helper cells that will help the B cell make perfect antibodies. It makes perfect antibodies to all parts of that invader, all parts of the virus, all parts of the bacteria, all parts of the toxin, you see, all of it. <laughs>